What's going on guys? I got another 1x player video for you. There are going to be a few things that's going to happen to your device. I don't know, it might be fixed with the uh, global version. But a few things you're going to notice and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, first of all, when you turn it on for the first time um, and you press a button. Or when you turn it on, anytime you turn it on, when you do a hard reset, turn it on. You press a button and it'll make a sound. And basically it means that it activates uh, controller mode. Because if you hold the keyboard button, you'll hear that. It sounds like a disconnect, but it's actually a connect because it connects keyboard and mouse mode. So if you see the mouse here, it's accelerating extremely slow. That's one thing I don't like about it, but I rarely use this mode. But I just wanted to show you, it activates this mode, you know, and you could tap the button, you get the keyboard, but really don't know what the other buttons do because the, uh, the uh, manual was not very descriptive as far as all the perks to keyboard and mouse mode but you as you can see you do get keyboard and mouse mode it's very slow it has like a mouse acceleration you could probably fix that with some settings but i'm not too worried about that the issue is you hold it again and it goes back to controller mode so that that thudum, that disconnection sound is actually a reactivation of the controller okay now what's the problem with that the problem with that is sometimes It'll activate the controller in player two. I don't know why, but it's really annoying because guess what? You're going to try to play some games and then for whatever reason, you won't, you're not going to get any uh, controls it's because it's recognized as player two when there's no player one. And the way we check this and make sure, and it always happens, it happens to me not very often. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't happen like every time, but this is how I check the PS3, the PS3 emulator will tell you X input pad 1 is disconnected when you click on it you're gonna see X input pad 2 is connected and for some reason X input, X input pad 1 is disconnected that means that it switched to player 2 resetting it doesn't fix it it just does it again I'm really not sure what causes it it happens sometimes after resetting it you know after turning it off and on multiple times somehow you'll end up in controller 2 now if this happens to you it doesn't mean it won't work for certain games. You just have to switch to player two. And PC games, emulators, that's fine. You could do that. As you can see, it's still, if you look at the analog sticks, I have control in player two here. Um, but anyway, and, uh, and emulators, that doesn't matter. In PC games, it matters pretty much. And since it happened to me, I was like, you know what? Let me make a video on this to show how to fix that. So close this out. So what you got to do is go to device manager, right? I already have it here. Uh, now, you guys might know a better way. You're probably more tech savvy than me. But this is the way I was able to fix it. So I just want to help anybody that has this issue. Um, and the way you'll know you'll have this issue if you don't have RPCS3 is if all of a sudden your controls don't work. Now, at first I thought it was because of the driver, um, a driver issue. But... Um, is this so basically what you got to do is right click on here by holding it or using a mouse and keyboard and disable xbox 360 controller in device manager um and then it's going to say it needs to restart yeah it needs to restart to to do that and then restart now after you restart it's still going to make that sound Ta -da, as soon as you press one button but the difference is once you activate it in Device Manager after Windows starts, it'll be Controller 1 uh, without having to restart. So from then on, it'll be Controller 1. And then it stays like that for a long time through a lot of restarts, you know, a lot of gameplay sessions. It's fine. But then it will randomly go to Player 2 again. Like I said, I don't know what triggers it. Um, never had this issue with any other controller but i do see other people having this problem on laptops with uh, xbox 360 controllers being plugged in i've never had this issue with the gx pro but you know I, i'm not like i said i'm not really sure what triggers it but i just wanted to show you guys how to fix it so now watch i'm gonna press a button and it still makes that disconnect sound which means it activates the controller but the difference is you're not going to be you're not going to have any controller plugged in because in Device Manager, you disabled it. Oh, sorry. I got all this stuff coming up in Startup. Okay. So then when all of that's said and done and you restart it, just reactivate Xbox 360 controller. Re-enable it. 
and device manager and you should be good to go for a little while longer and the way we check that again is to open up the rpcs3 emulator um, there's probably another way to check it i'm just showing you guys how i do it um that doesn't mean it's the best way to do it or whatever and then if you look here we're back in pad one and as you can see oh it makes the it makes the disconnect sound again when you press a button again after you reconnect it so meaning that it activates the controller again after we enable a device manager but as you can see the analog sticks are moving it doesn't show the buttons move that's why i'm showing you guys the analog sticks at the bottom they are moving we're back in business on x input one and you look here and it says x input two three four is disconnected so it's a little thing but it, it, it is annoying because when you're trying to get into a game like I said, it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes when you're trying to get into a game and you're like, what the hell, I'm pressing buttons? It says press start to continue, nothing's happening. What the hell is this? And in Call of Duty, that's very apparent because in Call of Duty it says switch to keyboard and mouse mode and there's absolutely nothing you could do because it doesn't recognize player two at all. It thinks you're using keyboard and mouse and then you're screwed. You can't even get through the menus. So um, anyway, that's the only way I've known to, you know, fix this problem. If you guys have any ideas on how to fix it, go ahead and leave the information in the description. I'm happy to try it. But that's something you guys are going to have to watch out for. Or if it's fixed with the release, um, with the global release, then you should be okay. Um, but, you know, if it happens to you, at least you know what to do. Or maybe you have some better idea. I just want to give you guys that heads up that that's going to happen. Um, hmm. Another thing I showed you guys in my previous video is that the volume is going to be a little bit low when you get it on the low side. And there are many ways to fix that. Uh, you could use your own software that you like. But what I did, the fastest way to, to you know, get that fixed, I used Dolby Access. Um, Where's this playing a video? Okay. So I used Dolby Access and then customize it. You go to Products. Right, and you customize it. You click headphones, and it'll it'll look at the speakers as headphones, even though um, even though it's not headphones, because for some reason the the Dolby Atmos home theater version of it doesn't work. Now there are probably better ways to do this. I don't know. Maybe it's a frequency issue. And you guys can experiment when you get yours. But as far as I'm concerned, I when I'm at home, I like to play it out loud. I could obviously plug it into my home theater or use a Bluetooth uh, speaker. I have a lot of different options. I have a speaker that goes into the auxiliary that's just like, you know, there's a lot of things like this I can just plug into here. I use this for my, um, for my uh, SP404. You know, there's a lot of things you can do to avoid to get past having to install the software. But, you know, it's a software that's in Windows. I believe they give you a free trial. I'm not 100% on that because I bought it a long time ago. It was like 14 bucks. But it's lifetime. You could use it on any computer, even on your main rig, if you have some issue with your speakers in the main rig and it's really low. Because I did happen to buy a laptop and the speakers were really low, and I understand why. I bought a recent Alienware laptop, and just to upgrade my uh, other laptop, and the speakers were really low too. So I ended up having to use this same app. But, you know, just to give you guys an idea of something else that you can do as far as software is concerned to fix that issue... Um, it's not that the speakers are low. The speakers are really high quality and the, uh, the driver is a really high quality. But it only is really loud, it's only really loud and, 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 and taking full advantage of the quality when you're playing certain games. Certain games don't have any... Certain games are really low and certain games are really loud. I understand. Like, for instance, uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4, extremely loud game. And then you play uh, Guilty Gear Strive and... The volume is low, you know. You want to be able to hear them sound effects and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you're playing retro games, because in my opinion, um, half of the fun of playing retro games, like on Emulation Station or, you know, Hyperspin or something, is hearing the music because the music is classic, you know. You get to enjoy it. Anyway, enough of me ranting. Uh, that's the only things I had issues with on this device so far, so I figured I'd make a video on it to show you guys the solutions. Um, trying to Let me think. Anything else? Anything else I had issues with? Uh, hmm. Nope, that's pretty much it. The turbo button works really well, so you don't really have to download third-party software to manipulate the TDP. You just press turbo and you go up to, uh, uh, you range between 27 watts and 35 watts. 
it bursts to like 30 35 but it stays basically at 27 and without turbo it stays at 20 unlike the gx pro you might have to do some manipulation because uh when you think you're you set the the wattage at 20 watts in the bios on the gx pro it actually is not 20 watts it's up to 20 watts so it stays at really low um uh, tdp unless it feels like it's it dictates whether or not it's going to you know go up so th there's a few you know differences between the two devices but as far as the tdp stability this device does really well um oh and that resolution thing the resolution thing i was uh mentioning in my other videos that's another thing that's uh, a little annoying but i don't think that's this device specifically i think it has to do with the uh with the uh the the strange resolution of this device so if you go to display settings here you got to remember our native resolution is 2560 by 1600 on this device. So there's a thing with certain games, a lot of the games, where it'll start off, it'll open in full screen mode, and then it'll be like um, very strange, stretched out, weird looking, you know, it looks like it's in a corner or something. Meanwhile, the whole screen is being full. And in my other videos where that actually happened, if you look at my Guilty Gear Strive video, you're going to remember... That all you have to do is press the, this is the desktop button, it'll take you right to the desktop. You press the desktop button, it'll take you to the desktop, and then you click the game again, and, and then it'll fix automatically. It has some kind of negotiation problem when it first boots up the game, so that's something that you gotta look, in, look into. Um, other than that, I haven't had any issues with this at all. In fact, it's been very much a pleasure to play and use. It's very ergonomic, it has these grips in the back, which is pretty cool. It doesn't get hot because the it, it, I think it sucks in air from back here and pushes it out up here. So your hands actually don't get hot. You know, you don't find your hands sweating. The material on here is pretty grippy. So um, if you get some kind of, you know, special casing around it, you might lose some of that grip. It might become slippery and that's not really good. This material they're using is really grippy for the uh, for your hands. If you have big hands like me, you won't have any issues playing it. Uh, I will probably get something for the analog sticks. They're not uncomfortable, but, um, you know, if you have big hands like me, you're used to, like, analog sticks, like an Xbox 360 analog stick, and you could probably get something that could go around it. You know, it's going to be the switch size, I think, to make it a little bit bulkier and a little bit more um, comfortable for first-person shooters. But I wouldn't really play anything competitively uh, as far as first-person shooters on this device. You can if you want to. Um, but like as far as uh, on this analog stick, nothing wrong with it. It's just it's very weird to get used to because it's not it doesn't feel you know, it, 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 Well, I don't know for me. I, I'm a controller user for games uh, and not really a mouse and keyboard for games And it doesn't really feel comfortable with first-person shooters because of how you, ha you have to hold it, but that's just my opinion But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys a few things that you know that happens That's a little annoying that and how to fix it all right, thanks guys for wasting your time watching this video. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one.